You got yeah. it. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Hannah Rakowska, and she is not only going to be making a fantastic recipe, but she's going to be talking a lot about cancer prevention. She actually overcame it herself. Please welcome her to the show. It's so nice to see you. Hi, everybody. Hi, Chef AJ. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you because, you know, cancer is, it's, it's a big deal and it's on a lot of people's minds because either they've had it, they know people that have it. And it's certainly something that from what I understand, it's better to prevent. 100%. It is more preventable than treatable uh, based on everything we have learned in the last few decades and the war on cancer that has not been won. Uh, it has, it is definitely where we need to, to target our efforts is prevention. Right. So how did you get so interested in helping people with this? Yeah, great question. I actually, I was uh, all set to go into the dental hygiene program. I actually completed the dental hygiene program, but during that whole process, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma and I was 20 years old and um, basically, you know, was proposed six months of uh, chemotherapy treatments and radiation treatments for stage one cancer. Uh, I refused at the time. Um, just it didn't feel right for me to go through stage four treatment with a stage one diagnosis. And that actually led my family and I to travel to Peru, uh, where there was a medical institute who, where the oncologist actually treated cancer with um, chemotherapy, radiation, as well as herbal therapy. And so uh, they, yeah, they sent me down and they said, you know, first thing you got to do is you got to change your diet. I was eating a very Polish uh, cuisine, lots of sausage and creams and um, pierogies and you know meat, right? Meat a couple times a day. Kielbasa by any chance? Kielbasa, oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> and even like, just like chicken or fish, but it was every day, right? A couple times a day. And uh, they said, first thing you gotta do, you, you've gotta change your diet. You've gotta go more plant-based. And they, they feed you at this retreat center that I was at at this institute. Um, and then they, you know, they give you plant-based meals as well as herbal therapy. And so I learned about this entire, I mean, it just opened my eyes. I had never been exposed to, to any sort of um, plant-based dietary pattern before. I never even thought about what I was putting into my body. Came back to Vancouver from Peru uh, with, with, you know, all my herbs. And then that led me to take a couple months to think about what I wanted to do for treatment in Vancouver to continue treatment in Vancouver. And I found a, a new oncologist uh, who treated me in more in an individualized manner. He did another scan and the scan showed that my tumor had decreased by 50% since I just had done the herbal therapy and the nutrition. Wow. How so old were you? How old were you? Me. How old were you at the time? I was 20, 20. Wow. Yeah. That must have been quite a shock. It was. <laughs> so yeah, and, and, you know, 50% reduction in tumor growth, I mean, or tumor size at the time was just like, whoa, this nutrition and, and complementary treatment really works. And then we did chemo after that to complete everything. What did you, what was the first thing that went, uh, how did they even find the diagnosis? Did you have symptoms? How, what led to you discovering that you had this? Yeah, great question. I actually felt great. I was working out all the time. I felt I mean, no symptoms at all, except for a lump on my neck that I found myself. Um, there's still a scar here from the surgery, but um, I just kind of found this lump and it ended up being um, several lymph nodes inside my neck. My entire neck was uh, wow. you know, <laughs> affected. I, I can't imagine what a person must go through when they get a diagnosis. Were, were, you, were you scared? What, how did you feel? Uh, you feel very numb. And at the age of 20, the, the first thing that comes into, into your mind as a woman, that's, you know, as an early or a young woman was obviously losing my hair. Um, just because, because that's what we're exposed to um, in terms of the media, uh, in terms of cancer treatment. And then all my little problems of dating whoever or schoolwork or whatever, getting great grades just disappeared. Everything just disappears. All you care about is your health. <laughs> Yeah. So it's a shock, but it, it's funny how most people don't really think about their health until it's almost gone. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what, that's what I try to, that's why I try to push prevention so much now is, you know, you don't really, I know that people don't care about prevention as much until they're hit with something like this, 
Um, but that's why I just always try to, you know, stress that, like, you don't want to be sitting there at the doctor's office. You don't want to be hearing that diagnosis. Right. Absolutely. You know, people want to eat for the cure and run for the cure and walk for the cure. I mean, they want to eat, run for the cure and walk for the cure when really they got to eat for the cure or eat for the prevention. So they don't need the cure. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, Dr. Greger has a great, so many great, obviously, videos, but one of them is talking about how cancer is on a con- continuum, and it is, it's a 10 to 40 year process, a chronic disease. And in the middle of that, the middle stage, that promotion stage of cancer is, is highly affected by our dietary and our lifestyle choices. And it, it's this like golden opportunity for us to intervene when it's, when cells are dividing, but they're not, metast- it's not metastatic to really um, prevent it from progressing and prevent it from actually becoming a metastatic disease. Uh, so we have so much control with our dietary um, and our lifestyle factors and habits. In fact, the place that you went to in Peru, does it still exist? And how did you even hear of it? Yeah, uh, you know, the universe always has a funny way of, of doing that, right? Uh, my mom was actually reading just for, for leisure. She was, or for pleasure, she was reading a book about a Polish missionary who was working in the Amazon uh, with herbal therapies for cancer treatment with oncologists. And as I got diagnosed, she was reading, she was reading this book. And the, the Institute does exist. It's called EPIFA. So it's, it's, a, um, you know, it's a Spanish name, but it's the Institute of Phytotherapeutic Research in, in wow. Lima, in Lima, Peru. Really, really great place. Yeah, really. They treat, they treat not just cancer, they treat chronic diseases. Um, that's Very fantastic. I, I, you know, I've heard of like the Gerson Institute, and a, but I've never heard of that. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, and they don't, they don't, um, they don't shun like chemo. They still promote it uh, and radiation. They just say it should be complementary, like nutrition and everything else should be an adjunct to the med- the medical treatment because it's so harsh, right? The medical treatments are so yeah. harsh. Do they completely recommend a 100% plant-based diet, like just for in general? Uh, you know, for my, for my diagnosis, they did, uh, they, they did say you can have a little bit of lean meat, like once a week, if you want, want to, but for my diagnosis, it was more, no, you got to go like whole food, plant-based minimal, you know, minimal flavor, minimal spices. Let's just keep it really nice and bland. Let your body heal from this. Wow. Had you ever heard of a vegan or a plant-based diet before this? Uh, no, not really, actually. No, I had not. <laughs> so uh, well, this opened my eyes entirely. Um, and when I got, and it's funny when things start rolling, like after the, after I started eating this way for my health and I started juicing and, you know, cabbage juices and beet juices every day during chemo and everything else. After that, things started rolling and I started meeting various people that talked to me about other uh, parts of going plant-based, you know, the animal welfare aspect, recommending book recommend you know environmental aspects as well so it just kind of rolled and then my whole world just opened and I realized I need to do this for um I want to help other people going through cancer so even though they offered you the option of having a small amount of meat you you didn't take it did you I think I probably took it the first day just because I was used to it (laughs) and then after that I, I just completely realized I didn't need this yeah, I'm curious though why with what we know, you know, from Dr. Furman and Dr. Greger about uh, cancer and animal products, why they would recommend any if somebody already had the diagnosis. Uh, I, I, I thought about this a lot and knowing now what I know about the, the importance of, um, I think it was to do with protein at the time. This is also, you know, 2006. So this is a long quite a long time ago, we weren't as educated, um, I don't think on the, in terms of protein, especially as we know, some doctors, most doctors don't have the nutrition education or training. Uh, so I think it has to do with protein during, during treatment because cancer patients require more than the average person. And so for them, I think it was more, you know, you can have a little bit of quote unquote protein. Um, and that's what it kind of centered around. I don't know what their what the recommendations are today. I'd love to actually reach out and find out. <laughs> Maybe they forgot that plants have protein. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I should go there and uh, 
to come there. Or something. That's so <laughs> funny. Well, that's, I, I always say I learn at least one new thing on the show and that's a very cool uh, yeah. place. I, I Googled it and, you know, maybe I'll have somebody from that on the show because it might give other people hope that haven't heard of that place that are look, is looking for an alternative place to go. And also, I don't know why it's called alternative. I mean, you know, to me, the chemotherapy and radiation should be the alternative when, when, you know, the holistic approach doesn't work. I know, I know, especially when we know that, you know, chemotherapy is not as effective as most people would think it is uh, for most cancers. There's a great book about that. I think it's called The Emperor of All Maladies. Have you read it? I have not. What's yeah. it called, sorry? Uh, the Emperor of All Maladies. It's about how basically it doesn't work, you know? I mean, because yeah. when, they, when they give you these numbers, they're not really what people, unless you're a statistician, they can do it. It gives people false hope, but yeah. So anyway, that, that's, yeah. that's just a very cool story. Did, did cancer run in your family at all? No. And, and it, I mean, sorry. Yes. My, my, one of my grandparents had uh, breast cancer. Uh, my grandma had breast cancer, but knowing that, you know, learning what I'm going through this whole process, going to nutrition school, I did a, a cancer nutrition program as well um, to become a certified holistic cancer practitioner um and also just reading books of medical experts you know like dr gregor dr richard bellivo and you know various others dr Pierman. we know that genetics are only responsible for five to ten percent of all cancers so that's the thing you know yeah it ran it runs in my family but so does our diet <laughs> right people don't realize how much power they have uh, you know yeah in, in exactly these. exactly so yeah was, well it, so you turned um you know life gave you lemons and you made lemonade you turned a, you know something that could be devastating and you know horrible into basically your career yeah um i i completely changed my career i am super passionate about not only you know prevention through dietary habits and means but also through nutrition therapy in general for cancer treatment because uh, like malnutrition causes one in five cancer related deaths. And again, it's just not talked about in the medical system. Um, you know, there's like one dietitian for every 2,300 cancer patients in the States. So it's a huge, huge issue uh, on, in, on two different levels on the prevention side, as well as during treatment and after, of course, right? So that's why I'm really, really that's why I'm trying to, to spread the message of let's prevent it if we can. But if you are to get a diagnosis, let's try to support your body in the best possible way, support your natural system, like defense systems in the best possible way during these, these other very aggressive treatments. What is the best possible way? To support the body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I think it's, I think it's uh, based on what the science says. It's a plant powered diet. Um, you know, we have so many, so much research now, so many different lines of converging research showing that plant-based dietary patterns reduce the risk of several cancers. And that's because plants contain so many protective factors, including you know, not only vitamins and minerals, but phytochemicals that have been scientifically proven to suppress cancer cells in the lab, um, as well as fiber, as well as you know, um, antioxidants, uh, just the whole range of, of protective factors. So that is the best um, diet. You know, we know that we we know that um, plant-based diets have been shown to favorably alter gene expression in cancer and to help reduce um, proliferation of cancer cells in the lab, as I said, and just to support your immune system, your microbiome, like your gut health, which supports your immune system in turn. Um, supporting DNA repair, stem cell regeneration, so many things. Yeah. So plant, plant-based diet, I would say all the way. That's great. And do you work with people individually in groups? What, what, what do you do? Yeah, great. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, I do, I work with, I work individually with people, um, as well as I, I teach nutrition classes in several, um, centers and clinics in Vancouver, um, to do with, with cancer nutrition and chronic pain nutrition as well. But I typically work with one-on-one, -on -one, um, which, which I love to do just to connect with, with, with people and make sure that they're guided and supported along, along the way um, in terms of going through treatment. So currently that's where I'm at. <laughs> oh, wow. Great. So what do you eat? And do you eat differently now that you've, you're 
you know, are recovered. And do you ever worry about it coming back? Oh yeah, that's a great, that's a um, very important question. I used to worry a lot about cancer coming back, um, but then you, as you, I think dur during my entire process of being diagnosed, I was also opened up to the world of um, spiritual healing and, and, and mental health and everything else. I, I met everybody that I was supposed to meet along the way in terms of um, like integrative energy healers and, you know, um, just guides that I really needed at that point in my life. And I realized that I can't live in fear. It's just, it attracts um, a disease state in the body, right? So I really try not to live in fear. I try to, to live my life and, and just day by day. Um, but I do eat differently now than at the time when I went, when I was first plant-based because I, I was a really unhealthy vegan at the beginning, especially after cancer treatment, you kind of go into this, like, Oh, you know, um, so like celebratory mode where you're eating anything you want. Um, and I actually gained some weight eating a lot of oil based, um, refined ultra processed foods as a vegan. And, you know, slowly over time, I I transitioned to a whole food plant-based diet. So today I eat, I mean, I try to, I really try to, to avoid processed foods, but once, once in a while, of course, you get into, um, you know, you go to a barbecue, we have like a, a veggie burger that's maybe on meat or whatever, but I try to really stick to, to the, the basics, the whole grains, legumes, the vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds, no oil. Usually. <laughs> Daryl said he missed at what age she was diagnosed 20. You know, you don't look much older than 20 now. Oh, I, I'm 37 in I'm 37 in a couple of weeks. Well, you you really I mean, you look amazing. So I mean, it seems like time time has stood, stood still for you. You know, it's yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's nutrition, too. So. <laughs> so so you did ultimately do a little bit of the conventional treatment after going to the place in Peru, right? Yes, uh, I was introduced to when I when I flew home from Peru, when I got home, I had three messages on my answering machine on our answering machine uh, that recommended one specific oncologist in Vancouver, a private one, who basically looked at me and said, I'm not giving you stage four treatment, there's no way you'll like I'll make you like you'll be sick from that. Um, you know, you know I, I really wasn't, I really had no symptoms of this disease at all. I felt great, except for the lump. Uh, so he just said, let's do a PET scan. Let's see where it is. Actually, let's see where it is. Um, when we found out where it actually was, that it hadn't spread, he said, you only need like one eighth of the treatment that was initially proposed. Uh, so I was really, really lucky. I did chemotherapy for about a, uh, six weeks or two months. I forget now. And then I did a month of radiation therapy. So and again, it took like, you know, recovering from that was also where nutrition came into play because regardless of how much you're getting, it's still, it's still a cytotoxin, it's still highly toxic therapy. Um, so again, like supporting myself through nutrition after and plant powered um, dietary habits were, was just so, so important. Yeah, absolutely. People always ask every guest, even yesterday, my guest was 10 years old and they asked her, what do you eat in a day? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I start with oatmeal in the morning, uh, with berries and like, and flax seeds usually just to keep it really simple. Um, and I also like to add some green, like green powder to my oatmeal just to amp up the nutrition. Um, if I don't have oatmeal, I'll have my, the smoothie that, that I'll be making for you today or dem demoing for you today. Uh, but I love oatmeal in the morning. It just keeps me satisfied. It's comforting to me. Um, it's not just a, like a, I look forward to it in the morning. And then I stick to just like really simple. Um, I, I think it was Rich Roll. He was in Vancouver the other like two, a couple months ago for a convention. He said he keeps things really simple with his diet, plant-based. And I relate to him entirely. Like I will have brown rice and beans and guacamole and pico de gallo or salsa like every day and be really, really happy about that. <laughs> maybe put it in a wrap sometimes maybe make pasta sometimes um but I'm really simple like I, I approach food really like yeah I'm the same way my instead of rice and beans with me it's sweet potatoes and broccoli I don't know when I like something I don't get tired of it That's I think it. exactly when you're not eating addictive foods it's not you don't have the same draw for having to have them I think 
Exactly. Just you, you like you and me too. Like sweet potatoes, yams, potatoes, um, broccoli. I do have quite a bit because it's it's a cancer food. I wish you'd include that. Um, I actually have a list of um of foods that I include on, in my daily diet if I can. And that's why I created the the smoothie recipe. Are you going to uh, be by any chance? Are you going to be demoing the smoothie? Yes. Yes, oh, good. I, I can't wait. So guys, there will be a wonderful recipe. So stay tuned for the end of the show. Yeah, for sure. Um, because it's just a nice way to get everything in, in one go. <laughs> it does make it, does make it easy. I know that Dr. Christy Funk, who uh, with breast cancer has like loves the idea of getting everything in, in a smoothie. She has her famous antioxidant smoothie. I love her. I, I love her book. Um, I was actually going to recommend uh, your viewers to, to read her book because it's incredible. It's such an important book for women. Uh, breast, the owner's manual. Uh, you know, she's incredible. Um, and as well as another book, this is the book that I got when I had cancer. It's called Foods That Fight Cancer. I got it at, I got it at Costco in 2006 and I still refer to it. And um, it's by Dr. Richard Bellivo and um, what's, uh, Dennis Gingra. And it is the scientific uh, compilation of all the foods that have been actually proven to fight cancer in the lab. It's incredible. Wow, I've got, I think that's a great resource. Is he somebody that, that's on the scene at all that would come on a show and talk? Uh, Dr. Bellivo would, uh, I, I think he'd be an incredible guest to have on. Do you um, know how to contact him? Because I can try. I haven't ever contacted him, but I've <laughs> tried. He actually is a part of an, a really uh, documentary called The C Word with Megan O'Hara when she was going through her cancer, breast cancer treatment. <clears throat> he was a part of the documentary as well. You are a wealth of information. So maybe you can answer wow. this question from Susanna. Yes. How would Hannah suggest we approach this way of eating with friends and loved ones, especially those who are eating a sad diet? Love it. Uh, friends and loved ones. Um, if So I think, you know, in, being in the plant, I think Chef AJ, you know this too, like the best way to do it is just to lead by example. And bring your own food and make make really delicious meals when you when you have gatherings and invite people over for a potluck, invite people over for dinner, um, bring a dish when you're going over to their home. Maybe suggest a restaurant that has plant based options. Um, recommend a documentary to watch. I love recommending documentaries because they're a really nice, easy, entertaining way for people to get more information. Uh, the one that I recommend recently is Game Changers because it's, you know, you just say Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, produced it and Jackie Chan and Lewis Hamilton and everybody's eyes just open and they say, oh my gosh, you're kidding. I've got to watch that. Um, so I, I approach it that way. I was also, you know, when I was married before, I just made my own meals. My ex-husband made his, his chicken, like four, breast, four chicken breasts a day. And it ended up kind of being, um, he ended up just changing to a plant-based diet because he liked my food better. He liked the flavors better. So I think just be, getting people exposed to it is, is the way to do it. Nice. Uh, Jerry wants to know what kind of healing exercises do you do? Healing exercises in terms, like, uh, can you specify, is it Sherry? Uh, Jerry, I maybe she needs oh, said you said, you know, like you're taking a whole body-mind approach and not worrying that the cancer is going to come back anymore. Yeah. Okay. I, I understand. Um, every morning I do the Wim Hof uh, breathing method. So I do a lot of breathing exercises uh, to balance, rebalance my mind, my nervous system. I think that that's the most important. Honestly, your nervous system is, is the most important part of, of, to me of health because I know that I have, I suffer from high anxiety and stress. And so I want to make sure that I start my day in a, a, the proper um, parasympathetic state, <laughs> uh, calm state. And then I do yoga almost every day. I joined a yoga studio that is um, traditional, like Indian yoga, which is very spiritual. I also have an integrative energy healer that I see whenever I feel like I'm out of alignment. Uh, prayer is really important to me. Meditation um, is also important to me. And, if, and, and just being around people that I love and doing things that bring me joy. That's you know, nice. Have yeah. you ever heard of Reiki? Oh yes, yes, energy healing. Yes, I love that. Do you do that? Do you do that? I've been doing it as often, you know, at least once a month since I discovered it, and I think it was like 2003. It's I think it's a total game changer. I think 100%. it keeps you well. Is what I it think. does. 
you know, when you're not, I always tell my clients, you, you know, you can infuse yourself with, with green juice all day. If you're not looking at your soul and healing your soul from that perspective, it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard to heal when you're not incorporating that part of your health. Yeah, absolutely. I saw a question from Mo. Mm -hmm. Where did it go? Okay, my chat moves a lot more quickly than everyone's. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, do, have you ever had an influence on your friends or maybe even your family since you changed your way of eating? Uh, great question. Yes. Uh, my family, of course, because they get the bombardment of everything, right? Like I, pre I preached to them day, since day one. They saw me go through what I went through. So it was easier for, for them to change to a plant-based diet. And yeah, my mom is a vegetarian um, mainly like mainly vegan, mainly plant-based, but she has a little bit of cheese here and there. Um, my brother, again, vegan, um, love, a lot of my friends have switched to a vegan diet. Not everybody though. It's really hard to, or not hard to, I think everybody is on their own path and it's, uh, it's not really like, I have no, I've influenced a few people for sure. Uh, but have I changed many? I, I think it's more, more so my clients going through cancer, um, than my friends to be honest. Wow. Okay. If this question's too personal, you don't have to answer, but Jerry wants to know if you're single because she has a perfect son for you who's 36. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> but I, tell I people actually, you're in Canada though, because I don't think, Jerry, I think Jerry's somewhere in the U.S. That's really funny. Thank you. <laughs> that's sweet. Um, yes, I am single actually. I'm taking time for, my, for myself and my business right now. Yeah. For the nice. first time. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, yeah, sorry. I didn't mean, I asked that. Let me tell you something. I've done over a thousand fifty shows and I asked that question once and the person flipped out, did not want to be asked that question, but thank oh, you. No. Yeah, thank you for, book. Thanks for answering that so graciously, you know, so no that's, problem. that's fantastic. Um, does, does Hannah take healing nature walks in the beautiful Vancouver forests? Oh yes. Of course. I forgot about that. Yes. I take nature walks all the time. I like to do one, like one workout in the morning where I, you know, you, you work up a sweat, like a run or, um, or the gym or whatever, or hot yoga. And then in the afternoon, I'll take a nature walk. And I really, it's really important to me to do that, to be around, especially trees and water if I can. <laughs> yeah. Pets, because I find it like, they're very healing as well. Yes. I have a dog named Cornelius. We call him Corny or Corn Dog. And he's the rescue. And he definitely... I mean, he's not here right now, but yeah. <laughs> so that's he's a cute really name. I love that. Right it's such a yeah. proper name. You have, you're a huge dog person, right? I, uh, it, just pets in general. And that's what I love living up here. Now I see rabbits running by. It's like the cutest oh. thing ever. But yeah, dogs are always will have a special place in my heart. They're the best. Animals are the best. I think they're really healing. As a matter of fact, when I lived in the desert before the pandemic, Bailey and I volunteered at a cancer center and visiting patients undergoing chemo and radiation, which I thought was so interesting because you went to a place where they actually told you changing your diet was the utmost importance, but I would visit mm -hmm. people when they were having like infusions, which they could be there all day. So they were pretty bored. So they were mm. you know, watching TV, reading a book, but open to having a visitor because they weren't sick in the same way. Somebody in the hospital is, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? So like they were more open to, uh, you know, visits you know, Sometimes yeah. when somebody's very, very sick in the hospital. They just want to be left alone. And yes. when I was there, you know, ultimately they'd be coming around with the snack cart, especially if it was lunchtime. And like the choices were basically some kind of a sandwich on white bread. It could be turkey, it could be ham and cheese, it could be roast beef. And then they would give them chips and a soda. And, you know, I, as a volunteer, I wasn't allowed to say anything about diet, but it just seems that most oncologists feel that diet has absolutely nothing to do with it. You know, you bring up such an such a critical like I don't think people realize how critical what you just brought up really is because number one oncologists as much as I love them for what they do right for what they what they know and their toolbox their, their toolkit and their toolbox um they have about an hour of nutrition training in medical school on average right and even so I mean I was never told about nutrition when I was diagnosed um they never even bring they I mean, he, I asked him, I said, should I change my diet? And he said, eat whatever you want, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you happy during chemo is, is 
what we what we're striving for. Just get your calories in, regardless of whether that's Coca Cola or ice cream or pizza or kale. It doesn't matter, as long as you're getting your calories in. And that the truth of the matter is, it really does matter. <laughs> it matters more than we can imagine. Um, one in five cancer patients actually dies from malnutrition. So it, it's like one in five cancer related deaths are just because people aren't eating properly, right? That's shocking. Most people don't know that. And 80 to 90% of cancer patients experience malnourishment, signs and symptoms of malnourishment during their treatment. And oftentimes it's too late. We have to really get we have to like, we have to support the body through nutrition immediately at the di at time of diagnosis. Um, not like when we start getting signs and symptoms of malnourishment, right? So, I mean, it's shocking that we are, that we're not there yet in the medical system, like serving chips and Coke and, and deli sandwiches, like carcinogens, right? <laughs> I don't know if you're able to answer this question, but I'll ask it. Would a specific diet do anything to help someone recently diagnosed with idiopathic pulmonary disease? Idiopathic pulmonary disease, so a, a lung disease, um, definitely not my not my area of expertise at all whatsoever. Uh, I'd have to do research into that. But I again, I think that you can always support your body through nutrition when going through anything. Um, like we know that we know through studies on lung cancer patients that we can support them nutritionally through cancer, um, and also when people who are smokers when they eat, for example, cruciferous vegetables, they tend to excrete more carcinogens in their urine than people who aren't. So we can always support every system for sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, but of, um, oh, Adina says, what are your daily supplements? Oh, great question. <laughs> people always ask me this. So uh, I, will, I will talk about a couple in when I make this movie, just because they're whole food based supplements. But the ones that we really want to look at when we're eating a plant based diet, and Chef AJ, I know you know this already vitamin B12 is critical um, to prevent actually stroke. A vegans have a high risk of stroke when they're not supplementing vitamin B12. So I take vitamin B12 cyanocobalamin. I take, um, I take a thousand milligrams a day. And then I take a vitamin D3 because I am in Vancouver and we don't get enough sunshine usually sunlight during the day. So I'll take 2000 IUs of vitamin D3 a day. Uh, and then I'll take a medicinal mushroom extract powder. And I will, I will also take a, a powdered green formula in my smoothies or my oatmeal or just water. And that's usually what I stick to. Um, if I'm having high stress in my life, I'll have a B complex, a whole food based uh, B complex supplement that, I, that I'll take or magnesium before bed um, when I'm experiencing high stress or, or, or insomnia or something like that. That's, but that's pretty much it unless I'm missing something that'll come to my mind, but yeah. Nice. Really basic. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, but I'm, but, oh, what, I'm just curious, what do you do for exercise and how important is exercise in general for people trying to prevent cancer or who have been diagnosed with it? Oh, uh, I mean, it, it is, it is as important as your dietary changes, right? Exercise in terms of prevention, exercise during treatment. There's so many studies that show improved treatment outcomes with exercise, uh, especially studies on women with breast cancer. It's really, really important because exercise actually lowers the uh, uh, um, levels of estrogen in the body. It can help to reduce the levels of dangerous estrogen in the body. And so for me, I like to, I like to run. I like to switch it up. So I'll run around the lake. I'll go to the gym sometimes when it's raining here in Vancouver, which is often. So I'll do the elliptical trainer. And then I try to do a yoga class once a day or a hike in nature at the end of my day, because yoga is usually at the end of the day uh, for me. And it is critical. It's critical for mental health, for physical health, for reducing, again, levels of dangerous hormones in the body and getting things moving. When I had, because I had lymphoma, um, it, you know, lymphatic fluid doesn't have its own pump uh, like your circulatory system does, like your, your blood. Um, so it's really important to get things moving um, in terms of your lymphatic fluid. And so I really, I keep that in mind all the time that I, I, you know, when I'm sitting for hours on end, I try to get up 
every half an hour and do some sort of stretch or movement or something like that, or get on the rebounder, the little mini trampoline. That's, that's a really effective way to do that as well. Uh, especially for people going through cancer, the rebounder is a great um, form of exercise to get things kind of, yeah, flowing. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, okay. This is a good question from Colleen. Knowing what you know now, do you ever regret doing chemo and radiation? Yeah, that's a good one too. Uh, I don't regret it. Okay. I'll tell you why I don't regret it because the studies on chemo show that chemo is only, is only 2.1% effective for the majority of cancers, right? That's, that's the biggest study that was ever done. It is, but however, there are exceptions to that. And the cancers that are exempt from that are Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, various forms of leukemia and testicular cancer. And I had Hodgkin's lymphoma and chemotherapy does target stem cells in Hodgkin's lymphoma. So it was necessary for me and it was also effective. If I had another form of cancer today that, that didn't fall under those three categories, obviously testicular cancer wouldn't fall into that one for me, but I, I don't think I would do it, to be honest. I don't think I would do it. What was, what was it like going through those two procedures, chemo and radiation? Were you sick all the time? How, how did it feel? You know, during my chemo, I actually felt pretty good because I was, like I, I mean, my parents were making me cabbage, beet, juice, carrot, apple juices every single day. We juice like 64 ounces of juice a day. Um, I was eating a really like really nutritious, nutrient dense diet. I felt great. I never, um, I, my oncologist told me that I might lose my hair. I lost like an inch around the crown of my head all of the way around, but I didn't lose the majority of my hair. Um, I was able to exercise. I never, like, I, I think if I'm repeating, I'm sorry. I never vomited once. Um, I, I did feel depressed though. I remember feeling exceptionally depressed uh, on chemo. And then radiation was just, uh, the burn of it was painful. It really does, like I, I had it like to here. I had like a huge burn for a few weeks. But other than that, I think I went through it really, really smoothly com compared to other people that I've, that I've worked with that I've witnessed now. Yeah, I'm really lucky. Wow, fantastic. Um, Susan says, some plant-based experts maintain that juicing is the best way to intensively ingest nutrients. Do you agree? I agree in certain circumstances when, when someone has, uh, for example, if they have side effects of, of chemotherapy treatment, and they have mouth sores or nausea, indigestion, gastrointestinal issues, or they can't handle the taste of food. They can't handle a high fiber diet for whatever for whatever reason. Maybe it's the cancer, it's um, like a, a GI cancer, and there's a blockage somewhere. I think juicing is really really effective. I think it's a really good adjunct to an overall whole food plant based diet. Um, I don't I don't think it replaces a whole food plant based diet. However, I think that Fiber is just too important. 80% um, of micronutrients are found in the fiber of plants and vegetables. So we really don't wanna be missing out on, on that aspect when we're juicing, but as an adjunct, I think it's really, really effective. Unless someone just can't eat whole foods and then juicing, of course, is a really good way of getting nutrition in. Mm -hmm. But smoothies are better, there's more fiber. Absolutely, that's what I would think. Yeah. Um, do you, Mona says, do you use a powdered green, and if so, which one? I do. I use a powder, and I, I, I tend to switch it up a lot because I don't want to stick to just one. Um, I think that that the the one on the market now that I'm hearing a lot about is Athletic Greens, and I want to. I haven't tried that one yet. Seventy three different vegetables and fruits in one, uh, like product. Ritual uses that. I know he talks about it a lot that's where I learned about it from but I use organic um original greens currently but there, there are so many different different types as long as it's organic um as long as they're you know I would say organic and NSF tests would be really Thanks. good um do you do private consults Colleen wants to know and if so can you do them with people that live in the United States I do. I do private consults uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, and I do them all over the world. Yeah. Nice. Beauty of Zoom, right? <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Um, uh, Jerry says, bless you for um, all your suffering and sharing your experience so openly. Most people that work with you do, is it because they have a cancer diagnosis or do you just in generally work with people as a nutritionist? 
I do general nutrition consulting as well, but I but but I really try to focus on working with the cancer population because it's where I like I feel I'm doing my best work uh, because there's so there there's such so little support in that community um, because like I said there's one dietitian for every 23 cancer patients so I really do focus there as well as chronic pain I have a lot of experience working with chronic pain patients. Uh, but I do, I do. Yeah. I, I, I definitely help people with various health conditions. Especially. Nice. Nice. Um, have you ever heard of cachava powder as nutrition? Elizabeth would like to know. Cachava powder. She's no. spelling it K A apostrophe C H A V A. Maybe you could say what it is or I have not provide a link and then we can look more into it. Yeah. That'd be great. Yep. So let's see if there's any, um, Yes, her website. And yeah, you talk about that. See, if people watch on Facebook, they can't really see what's going on. That's why I really recommend. And same with Twitter. People do watch the show on YouTube because mm -hmm. it is a YouTube show because everything's in the show notes, your website, the link to get your free guide, the recipe, all that kind of stuff, your bio. So if you want to tell people what they can get, if they sign up, maybe they'll do it. Yeah, I, that's actually, that's a great thing I was going to say, because I have a sign for, um, from an expo I just did, I printed out a little banner or sign or whatever you call it. This is what you get when you sign up for my website. You get a daily guide to cancer cooking foods. And you, basically what I, what I did was I looked at all the research that has already been done by medical experts like Dr. Gregor and Dr. Christy Funk and Dr. William Lee and Dr. Richard Belly, both from Foods That Fight Cancer. And I compiled, I basically took everything that I learned and compiled it together into one daily guide for the foods that I want to incorporate, that I want my clients to incorporate on a daily basis that have been proven to help suppress cancer. And so what I have is I have them all listed with the with examples of the foods as well as serving sizes so that you know what to aim for every single day. All right. And it's not easy to get all those foods every single day. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, I, yeah. The book I was telling you about, The Emperor of All Maladies, was it's, it's a biography of cancer. It was written by an oncologist, and it's a book they really recommend and sell at the True North Health mm -hmm. Center. That basically, mm -hmm. talk about you know whether or not these treatments are effective. And yeah, it's very. I haven't read it, but I probably should. And it sounds because if Dr. Goldhammer recommends it, it's yes, good. And I'm going to read it as well. <laughs> and then tell me about it because it looks like a very long, hard book because it was, <laughs> it was actually written by a doctor. Um, Hannah's smoothie recipe uses soy milk. Would almond milk be a suitable replacement or is soy a specific ingredient for cancer fighting? What a question. Uh, soy is a specific ingredient for cancer fighting. It, it, yes, you can definitely use almond milk, oat milk, hemp milk, whatever you want. But I also want people to incorporate whole food soy um, into their daily diet. Um, recommended serving size is actually three servings a day or but minimum one cup of soy milk, organic soy milk, or non-GMO, or half a cup of, of tofu, which, which are examples of what, you're, what you want to aim for in terms of the content of the isoflavones uh, in soy foods that have been shown to reduce our risk of breast cancer substantially, as well as prostate cancer. And um, soy actually has so many other health benefits as well, like reducing uh, menopausal like hot flashes and increasing bone density and uh, reducing cholesterol levels, like bad cholesterol levels. There's, there are so many benefits to soy. Um, and it's just a really easy way to get it in when you're, when you're using it in your smoothie. Right. You know, you mentioned prostate cancer. Uh, do you, do you also work with men? Because there's such a strong link between dairy and prostate cancer, isn't there? Yes, there is. <laughs> yeah, I do. I work with men. Um, I do work with men as well. And I, I mean, dairy is a, is a strong association of prostate cancer as well as poultry and eggs, right? So that's always a fun conversation to have. Because <laughs> not used to eating plant-based, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Susanna wanted to know, how long was your training and where, did you, where was it located? My training, my nutrition training was one year uh, in Vancouver at the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition. But then I also did a degree in health science on top of that after that the, the schooling part uh, for nutrition. And then I did a um, diploma of holistic cancer practice at Edison Nutrition Center Institute in Toronto. Nice. Um, Teresa says, does this include skin cancer? Because 
if you, a lot of skin cancer is caused by the sun. So even if you're eating a perfect diet, which will help, I mean, you, there's still more involved with skin cancer, isn't there? I mean, you can't just assume that eating will help you if you're, you know, not using sunscreen. And I, I don't know, is that yeah. true? Uh, yeah. So with, with skin cancer, um, of course, SPF is so important. We know that, um, you know, having a physical mineral based sunscreen is so important, but diet is also really important because the antioxidants that you're consuming will also help to mop up the free radical damage from the UV radiation. So it's, you have to combine everything together. Yeah. Well, yeah. you have beautiful skin. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, I actually have a lot of melasma because I didn't take care of my skin in my twenties, but I never used SPF. It's actually. looking good now. You know, I, 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 I pride myself no. on my skin now because it was in such bad shape uh, because I, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, it's like people that smoke, you know, you, you, when you're young, you do foolish things. Cause you just think you're never going to get sick and you're never going to get die. Oh, yeah. You, you yeah. got sick at a very young age. And so I, I, you know, living in LA, it wasn't like it was living in the desert. And I, I never wore sunscreen. I remember it, it, like in my teens using baby oil and getting burns and oh, yeah. when I got to the desert. I mean, I, I saw two dermatologists because I, my skin was just in such bad shape and they both read me the riot act because they see so much skin cancer. I mean, that's mm. their whole, and then, and then I, I just did a whole 180. And I, I mean, and now I went from being a sun worshiper to basically a, a sun avoider, at least on my, skin. I mean, me I do not, I, I, I don't mind if my arms and legs get, you know, tan, but I, sun does not touch this face and me it has too. I almost four cover. years. Yeah. And that, I just, it's like, I'm, I mean, like when I'm out without a hat, I'm like, oh, Oh, like me too. <laughs> I'm, I'm the exact same boat now. I know it's a little bit late in the game, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, Jerry says my skin is flawless. Thank you. Well, because I just it just looks so your skin bad. is gorgeous. So. Yeah, well, it looks so bad, and I you know and I had to get things burned off, and it really hurt. And he burned a hole deep in my face, and then he had to do like like things. It was just a mess. So it's just easier, you know. It's just like processed food and addictive foods. It's easier for me to just avoid it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Me too. Hundred percent is easier than than leverage. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Susanna says, "Can you recommend a good brand of sunscreen, and what SPF should it be?" Oh, uh, that's yeah, for sure. Um, I like to. I like Beauty Counter. They're a mineral based sunscreen. No, Beauty Counter actually, yeah. most of their products are vegan, and they yes, have vegan. and and, and uh, Stacy Heine, who's been on the show, sells mm-hmm. it. She sent me some of their. She's my good friend. Yeah, she's a good friend of mine. So. Well, and she's gorgeous, and she sent me yes. their their twin skin foundation and some yes. lipstick, and, and their products seem really nice. Yes, uh, I love their products. So I mean, they're vegan. They're all natural. There's there's no you know there's nothing no toxins in their products. But I think that if you're going to like a drugstore. Um, you know, on a whim or whatever, just make sure that it's a physical sunscreen so that it actually gives you max maximum protection, broad spectrum protection. Okay. You, have so, you, have a very, you have a very calm demeanor. Oh, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be nice to, to consult with you. You seem very, Aww, very calm. That's oh, <laughs> Elizabeth wants to know, what's your favorite dish and what do you make often? So yeah, day to day, like I'm really basic. I promise. Like I, I sometimes I'll make a, I'll steam a baked potato or sorry, I'll steam a yam or a potato or I'll pop it in the air fryer, like cut up. And then I'll just have that with self pound guacamole for lunch. Like I'm really weird that way. I'll make weird concoctions on the go. Um, I have like seven pieces of fruit a day though. And then I love to have a uh, kale in my fridge, purple cabbage in my fridge. And then when I, when I need to basically supplement any sort of meal, like a soup or a chili or a rice bowl or whatever, I'll chop up the kale or purple cabbage or something to get it into my meal, to get cruciferous vegetables into any dish. I'll also do that with broccoli and cauliflower. I'll process um, raw broccoli, raw cauliflower, and I'll have broccoli sprouts in my fridge to be able to just add to anything that I'm eating. Um, but like, for example, avocado toast can be really, really basic with just avocado, but you can also add broccoli sprouts to that. You can add peppers to that. You can add, you know, chopped purple cabbage to that and mango and make it like a fantastic, uh, really like cancer fighting meal. So, um, but my favorite food of all time, I think I love, I, I love tofu. Like I love marinating tofu with a bit of like tamari and a little bit of, um, you know, maple syrup and tahini and whatever else and just like throwing that into a rice bowl and having like a beautiful miso dressing or a beautiful you know garlic tahini dressing on top that's kind of my favorite food 
<laughs> nice. Well, yeah. speaking of favorite food, what about your favorite smoothie? Yeah, let's let's make the smoothie. <laughs> and I'll, um, Shavija, is it okay if I just talk a little bit about the ingredients? Well, if I'd love for you to. What they do for in terms of cancer fighting? Of course. Okay, perfect. So I have. I stand up. You might not see me. Okay, it's fine. So I have my blender here. I don't have a Vitamix, but what you need is just a high uh, high powered blender, right? Uh, to make a smoothie and all the ingredients are on my website um, under the tab recipes. So I start with, I start with a cup to a cup and a half of soy milk, organic soy milk. If you don't have soy milk, you can definitely use um, oat milk or whatnot. And soy again is one of the top cancer fighting foods on the planet because it contains isoflavones and isoflavones are phytoestrogens that have been shown to help reduce the risk of breast cancer. Um, Chef AJ, I'm pretty sure you, you already know this, but the phytoestrogens in soy actually block the dangerous animal estrogen in our body. So they bind to the same receptor. Actually, we have two receptors, alpha and beta, but the binding of phytoestrogens in soy foods actually prevents the binding of dangerous estradiol in the body. So it's actually like a protective mechanism with soy and um, studies have shown that women who consume half a cup of tofu to one cup of soy milk per day have 30% reduction in uh, breast cancer risk, which is amazing. That's and amazing. it's amazing. And actually the earlier you start, the better. So if you're consuming soy as a, as a young, as a young, like a young child in terms of uh, women, so if, if, um, if you're consuming it in childhood, you actually can study show that it reduces the risk of adult onset breast cancer by up to 58%. So if you have daughters, get them started on eating whole food soy early. I wish I wasn't allergic to it. You're allergic to it? Okay, well yeah. then flax, flax is the next one, right? Nice. For phytoestrogens, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, soy is really, really important. Um, and for breast cancer survivors as well, it reduces the risk of recurrence and death. So uh, I'll keep that in mind, please. Uh, next up, we have just banana. I always use like a small banana. It can be frozen or not, doesn't matter. Uh, that's just for sweetness, but bananas also have cancer fighting properties. So they're delicious, but they also have cancer fighting properties. And then I also like to pop in a couple dates um, for sweetness and minerals and more fiber, but they're really, really delicious. Um, Next up, we have green tea. Green tea has some of the most, so this is actually matcha powder, matcha green tea powder. Um, I like to use matcha because it is easy to do in terms of adding it to a smoothie. I like organic matcha. And you can get this on Amazon if you're not able to get to the store. And I just pop that in about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. And you can also actually empty a, an organic green tea bag if you don't have matcha powder or you can use sencha powder um, or you can actually brew green tea and just use a couple ounces of your brewed green tea in your smoothie. So green tea has a compound called EGCG and this is one of the most natural compounds in food that can actually induce uh, cancer cell death. So it's called apoptosis, that's the term, and it's really, really powerful for that as well as preventing the uh, growth of blood vessels by a tumor. So it's one of the most powerful foods we can possibly consume. Uh, next up, we have amla powder, which is another powder, looks like that. Amla powder is an Indian gooseberry powder, and it has been shown to have the highest levels of antioxidants of any food on the planet. So a study done, I think it was on 3,100 different plants, found that amla had the highest amounts of antioxidants of any food. It's also super high in vitamin C, which brings me to another point of the ingredients in green tea, the EGCG, the catechins, they're not very absorbable by the body. Only 20% of them are absorbed in the body um, after digestion. And vitamin C makes them more bioavailable for absorption. So amla powder with the green tea is a, a really, really great combo for that. Um, and amla powder is literally, I, I did get this off Amazon actually, it's just an, um, a powder form, you get it in a bag and it lasts forever because you only use like half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. 
And it's super bitter, so you have to be aware of that. It's very, very bitter and sour. Uh, so we need the bananas and the dates and the smoothies for that. Next up, we have a, uh, another marriage combo of turmeric and black pepper. So you can use fresh turmeric root or you can use uh, ground dried turmeric powder like I have here. Make sure there's a little bit of black pepper in combination. And I use a half a teaspoon in my smoothie. You can start with one fourth if it's too much for you because turmeric is obviously really, really pungent. Uh, turmeric is another exceptionally powerful cancer fighting food. It belongs to all the different subgroups of um, a substance that has been shown to prevent and fight cancer. Turmeric blocks carcinogen action. It induces cancer cell death, which is again, apoptosis or cell suicide. And it helps to reprogram our cells to be able to self-destruct when they are unhealthy or abnormal. So turmeric is really, really important. And it's also important to recognize that turmeric is more powerful in a whole food form rather than an isolated curcumin form. Um, studies show that, like lab studies show that turmeric, whole food turmeric is much more potent in terms of killing cancer uh, cells in versus curcumin, like ex extract. So always use the whole food if you can. Do you, does it matter, if, do you have a particular brand of green tea that you like to use and does it matter if it's caffeinated or decaffeinated? Oh, that's a really good question. I like, so I like organic matcha is, as long as it's organic, it's important to me. Um, Sencha, I haven't, there's a, there's a brand that Stacey Heine always recommends for Sencha powder and I don't remember what it's called now, but that's what I'm ordering next. I'm gonna be there's a brand I love called Say Me. I don't know if that's you it. it. Yeah, and I and I have a discount code for that, and I, I've had that's the uh, Kiyomi on the show many times, and and it does come it, uh, decaffeinated as well. That's right. That's the one I'm ordering next. <laughs> so if you could put a link to that, maybe that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be fantastic. Yeah, and you could just use that. Sencha. So Sencha has the highest amounts of EGCG of any green tea on the planet. Uh, Japanese teas have more than Chinese teas and Sencha is like the highest. That's a really good point as well. Um, next up we have flaxseed. Okay, so, uh, so Chef AJ, you're allergic to, to soy, um, which is important for fried estrogens. Flaxseed, ground flaxseed, always choose ground, is high in phytoestrogens called lignans. And lignans are, have been shown to directly suppress the growth of breast cancer cells in petri dishes and lab studies. And women who have higher levels of lignin and lignans in their in their blood um, tend to have a reduced risk of breast cancer, according to population studies. So uh, we know that. And then the phytoestrogens in flaxseed also help to reduce the, the circulating estrogen levels in the body. So that's what you would be going for every day. And I and I recommend um, one to two tea, one to two tablespoons a day for flaxseed. Uh, next up, we have berries. Um, berries are, here I have blackberries, and you can use any berries you want. You can use frozen, fresh, doesn't matter. Pop them in. Um, berries are very, very important because they have elagic acid and anthocyanins that have both been shown to block carcinogen action and also induce apoptosis and prevent uh, blood vessel formation called angiogenesis again by a tumor. And, and they're delicious and they're high in fiber, like a cup of raspberries has eight grams of fiber. So you're getting a ton of benefit there. And fiber binds to excess hormones in the body, excess toxins and excretes them out for your, uh, from your colon. And um, next up, we have some kale from the garden. <laughs> Any leafy green will do, but I love cruciferous leafy greens the, the most because they're giving you that extra cancer fighting benefit, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, so I go for about a cup to half, uh, to two cups in my smoothies, depending on what I have available. And then and leafy greens have been linked to a reduced risk of chronic disease. They're, you know, they're high in every vitamin, mineral, phytochemicals, etc., especially potassium, which is really, really important as well for our health. And then we have the next group of vegetables that are cancer fighting, which are the cruciferous vegetables again. Kale was one of them, but I also like to add broccoli, like raw broccoli, actually, the actual, you know, cut up, or cauliflower or broccoli sprouts, which I have here. And broccoli sprouts, you can actually sprout yourself or you can get them from a grocery store. And the cool thing about cruciferous vegetables, and it's really, really important to, to remember this, is that within a cruciferous vegetable, there are compounds, two compounds that have to 
like come together and react to produce the cancer fighting um, bioactive compounds called isothiocyanates or indoles. So you have to blend or chew or chop a raw cruciferous vegetable in order for that to happen. Uh, that's why blending them up is a really good idea because you just, it's done for you, right? Everything is done for you. And you're creating those cancer fighting compounds in the blender. You don't have to worry about chewing as much. You know, I never saw anybody put sprouts in a smoothie until last week. We had Rebecca Matzel on who has, that's what she grows and deals with and sells. And, and uh, she made a, a broccoli smout, sprout pina colada smoothie. It looked interesting. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah. You can't really, I can't really taste them as much. Maybe I'm just used to it, but uh, yeah, it's a really good way. Of getting, but also if you're not putting them in your smoothie, it's really easy just to eat them out of the, out of the jar or the container or whatever, and just throw them into your salads and your sandwiches, etc. So it's really easy to eat them as well because they're so um, light. There's a question from Gina. Can one use chia seeds instead of flax or does flax have the specific cancer fighting property you're looking for? Um, yeah, you can definitely add chia seeds as well. They're high in omega-3s, just as flax is really, really high in omega-3s. But flax has lignans in it, which are the phytoestrogens that have been so um, that have been studied for reducing our risk of breast cancer and, yes. prost and, and prostate cancer, actually. So phytoestrogens are hormone modulating. So any hormonal cancers like, like ovarian, breast, prostate, they're going to be really beneficial. There's a question, does any kind of soy work? Would edamame work? Or does it have to be soy milk? And how, how young should a woman start consuming soy? I think I've, I've never seen like a minimal or a minimum age. I think that I, I have a lot of friends who are in the medical community who are vegan, who feed their toddlers soy, babies um, as well. I don't think there's an age limit there. Um, and yeah, you can definitely add edamame, like cooked edamame to a smoothie if you have a high power, high power blender, I think it would work. I've never done it though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or soft tofu even, I, I'm, I'm sure you can add that as well. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Shar, and I know you can't specifically answer medical questions, but it's more of a general question, I think, yeah. in the, that I'm going to ask you. She says her sister's been battling metastatic breast cancer for a year now. She has sores in her mouth, chronic diarrhea. Can she be helped nutritionally at this stage? So I think the broader question, because you can't really speak to her sister because she's not your client, but how far, uh, I mean, is it ever too late for somebody to use nutrition as a tool in the toolbox? Oh, such a, sorry. I, yeah, we should have probably, I should have highlighted this before. It is never too late to use nutrition and it is never too late to start to support the body because your body is designed to heal itself. It needs the right tools. And, you know, we, again, it's not medical advice at all, but you can definitely help your sister. You can definitely support her through, through uh, nutritional therapy with mouth sores. There are specific um, smoothies and mouthwashes that you can incorporate with that and then um, get her on like a plant-based protein smoothie, I would say, that is to get her protein intake and her calorie density up as well, for sure. Terrific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's a great question um, from Susanna, who always has great questions. I think I yeah. should hire her as my, my show researcher, <laughs> but I know that you can't like say anybody's name, obviously that you work with, you have to keep it anonymous, but she said, could you share somebody maybe that you work with as a cancer consultant who turned their cancer around? Yeah, um, there's, there are, there are many. Okay, so basically when I see clients going through cancer treatment, usually I see them when it's stage three or four, when chemotherapy hasn't maybe worked, right? So it's really difficult. It, it becomes more challenging, but there are a, a handful of, of uh, patients, actually two that come to mind in the last year, both dealing with glioblastoma, brain, um, aggressive brain cancer, both of them changed their dietary habits, went completely plant-based and did, I think they both had, they both had surgery, they both had chemo, but they also both had three to six months life expectancy and they're both thriving. Um, one of my clients, um, sorry, I said a year ago, but he actually, I, was, I worked with him in like 2017 um, and he's one of my good friend's father. So I always in touch and he's, he's like in his, early seventies and thriving. And another client was about a year ago and he's again, had a three month um, life expectancy given by his doctor and he's doing great and there's no sign of cancer. That's so, amazing. 
this is my cancer prevention right here. Here's your <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Whenever the show, it's like, she's my alarm clock. Whenever the show goes longer than an hour, she's like, mommy, it's lunchtime. I need you. Yes, we're almost done. Oh, no, no, it's okay. I'm just saying it's just so funny how, how she does that. She's With just- Bailey, right? Bailey, yes. Oh, beautiful. So I just love her so much. She's so beautiful. I know. I just, I mean, you know, we can have the, be having the worst day. And then she just, I mean, I just think, I just hope that every, anybody that has a chronic disease, cancer or not, would just get some kind of a pet because I know the research shows you live longer, you live healthier. And uh, yeah, look at the love, look at the love. And they help you go plant based as well because you get to see that they have these incredible souls. They are the best. I just love her so much. What can I do? (laughs) She loves you. What what kind of dog do you have? Mine is a Jack Russell. He's a Jack. Oh, cute. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I tried to make him vegan, but it didn't work out very well. (laughs) Yeah, I know. We try with Bailey, and she's just you know I adopted her at four. I think maybe when you get them as a puppy, maybe, but. You know, they're like, go. Oh, they're stubborn. They get set in their tastes, you know? Yes. Yeah. And he's allergic to beans and carrots and peas. So it was like, okay, I can't, <laughs> you know, but okay. Last ingredient that I store in my smoothie. Um, if I'm not using a green powder, that this is the last ingredient. I will use a medicinal mushroom powder. Uh, medicinal mushrooms. There are hundreds of studies that have been done um, on, med- on medicinal mushrooms in terms of health benefits, but also cancer. And in Japan and China, oncologists use medicinal mushrooms as an adjunct to chemotherapy and radiation because they, it, it does help to improve or can help to improve treatment outcomes and mitigate side effects of chemo and radiation. Um, so medicinal mushroom powder is something that I, that I use every day. Um, mushrooms contain a compound called beta-glucan that helps to support the immune system. So I just put in like a little scoop of that because that's all you need um, for a day. And I can, you can put that in your coffee as well. If you're having coffee or tea or even your oatmeal, it's tasteless entirely. And this is a combination of various mushrooms like lion's mane, cordyceps, maitake, shiitake, reishi, turkey tail, et cetera. Uh, so they're really, really important. And they have been shown to inhibit cancer cell growth in laboratory studies. So again, um, really, really important. And if you look at Asian populations where they consume mushrooms uh, regularly, they do tend to have lower rates of breast cancer so and prostate cancer. And mushrooms also help to suppress the enzyme that that produces estrogen in the body. So it's like tamoxifen. It's like the drug tamoxifen. Mushrooms have the same mechanism, which is really, really cool. Uh, Yeah. So then you just, I'm not going to blend because it's going to be really, really loud, but all you would do is you just blend this up. And you're done. And you have this incredible cancer fighting concoction. I mean, you're allowed to blend it if you want. And maybe you don't want to drink it right now, though. Um, it's just going to be really loud because my blender is not the best. Right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How many times a day should you drink the smoothie? Asks Char. Uh, so what I did was the, the actual like ingredients in the smoothie is I tried to make I, I took I took from the guide that I created. So you're getting, you're getting like eight ingredients from the guide immediately. So once a day, <laughs> nice. I tried to make it like a one-stop, you know, one-stop kind of meal to get the majority of the, the daily guide ingredients in there. And then as you go along through your day, maybe you'll add a little bit more flax to a salad or a fruit salad, or maybe you'll have turmeric in your curry that night or something. So you have room there as well. Right. You don't happen to have a USPO box, do you? Oh, what? Uh, sorry. Uh, a USPO box. No, I don't. Only because um, every guest on the show the first time gets two free samples of California balsamic, but they have to. Oh, they have to have a, a box. Yeah, he can't sleep. Oh, that's too bad. That's okay. Thank you for, thank you. For <laughs> but if you ever get to the United States and I'm still doing the show, you can take me up on the offer. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Chef AJ. So Absolutely. great. <laughs> Nice. Hey, you have a course and I know you're offering the viewers a discount. You want to say what it is? Cause the link is in the show notes and show notes are only viewable on YouTube. So head on over to YouTube to see that it's right below the video. Yeah. So thank you. Um, I have a course coming up September 1st. It's launching. It's called the seven day anti-cancer diet kickstart. So it's just a court, an online course, um, seven days with a meal plan recipes guided that will show you and teach you about the link between diet and cancer in a little bit more detail. And then it'll also take you through day by day how to incorporate a plant-based dietary pattern with cancer-fighting foods. 
um, to help you reduce your risk of cancer if you're if you're looking to be proactive against um, against developing it, or if you're a caregiver to someone who has it, or if you're going through cancer yourself, um, just making sure that you're getting those those phytochemicals that have been um, shown to help reduce the risk of, of cancer growth in your daily diet. Thank you. Um, Diane says, what brand was the mushroom powder? And Gina said, can any vegan medicinal mushroom powder be used? Yeah, as long, I think as long as you, it's a reputable company and I like to, I like for the mushrooms to have to, for the supplement to use the fruiting body, not the mycelium, the actual mushroom caps, not just the root system. Uh, this is fresh cap. It's a really, I really like their, their, their stuff. Fresh cap, I get it online. This is called the Thrive Six. It's like an immunity blend. Um, but yes, any, any high quality powder will do for sure. Um, Mona says in your course, is there a PDF and is it printable? There are multiple PDFs. You get an ebook with it that has, uh, like a guide to cancer, um, to diet and cancer, um, scientific studies. There's also a meal plan, a seven day meal plan, matching recipes, tons of information. You also get a variety of different PDF um, resources, including like a dairy alternative PDF. You get the daily guide to cancer feeding foods. Um, you get a smoothie guide as well. Uh, there are so many different things that are included in that, in that course. I just don't want to overwhelm people, but you get at least six different PDF resources to help you with your, with your dietary change. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And there's a question from Victoria. What is your opinion about spirulina powder? I love spirulina powder because it is a really, really wonderful way to get your protein intake up if you need to. Um, so I work with, actually, I do work with athletes uh, on occasion, and that is one of their kind of like secret weapons is using spirulina and smoothies to help get their protein intake up as well as iron and other minerals as well. Nice. Well, you have been just such a delight. What can I tell you? Oh, it's been so fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm really, so thank you for the work you do. And I'm so happy that you're able to help people because you've been through it. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's, it's been amazing being um, in your company. Absolutely. Thank you, <laughs> Hannah. You, well, you're named after my favorite food, the Hannah Yam. What can I tell you? Oh, yeah, right. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Kristen says, you're beautiful. You radiate health. Oh, that's so nice. Well, I have a ring light, so don't get it. You know. Yeah, me too. And then, <laughs> without it, you just look so dark. And Hannah says that she's going to check. Not Hannah, you're Hannah. Um, somebody said, uh, Colleen says she's going to check out your program. So great. Well, thanks, oh, Hannah. So Maybe great. you'll come on again sometime and we can uh, talk some more. Yes, of course, that'd be amazing. And thank you to your viewers as well. And thank you for having me again. It was my pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in a little over 90 minutes at 2 p.m. Pacific time when my guest, my monthly guest, the first Tuesday of every month is Thomas Allen from California Balsamic for Tuesdays with Thomas. Let me tell you what he's going to be making recipes that were sent in by you, the viewer, black bean mango and sweet potato delight, roasted balsamic beets and orange glad balsamic slaw. Take care. Do you like balsamic vinegar though? Should you ever come to the United States? Yes, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So it's so flavorful. And okay. was, You've got yeah. to get a friend in the US so we can send I do. It to I do. Yeah, we can send it to any, and maybe somebody's going to visit you in the near future and we can send okay. it to them and yeah. they can bring it over. Yeah, I have a couple ideas. Okay, great. Okay, let me know. Okay, great. Thanks okay. so much, Hannah. Okay, Thank take you. care.